This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about Bitcoin versus Litecoin. I've been getting a lot of questions about Litecoin, so thought I'd put together a comparison. If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull and bear markets, or you just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So if we take a look at their relative market caps, in other words, sort of the size of the currency, Bitcoin is currently at about $195 billion market cap. This is just all the coins multiplied by the price. Litecoin is still in the top 10. It is $3.2 billion. So definitely trailing Bitcoin in terms of market cap, but still in the top 10. Now, when Litecoin was invented, there was a sort of a marketing slogan attached to it that Bitcoin was gold and Litecoin was silver. And while this was very clever as a marketing uh, a marketing um, saying, it's, it's not as accurate if you begin to think about what was actually happening under the gold standard. So under the gold standard, when all nation state currencies were backed by gold, gold was basically used for really big payments. It was used for storing value, et cetera. And then silver coins were used or silver, silver uh, bars were used for smaller payments. In other words, silver coins are like pocket change as they still are in the US, even though they're no longer really made out of silver. Now, this is not a problem for Bitcoin simply because unlike taking a gold bar and trying to divide it up into little pieces to buy a cup of coffee, Bitcoin is uh, doesn't have the same problem that gold has. Bitcoin, it's essentially infinite, infinitely divisible. That's a little bit um, up for debate, but it's at least divisible into 100 million little pieces uh, called Satoshis or Sat. So it doesn't it doesn't have the same problem that gold uh, does. And it seems like this will be very easy to work around to add just more decimal points because we're talking about a digital currency rather than a bar of gold. Now, Litecoin had, a lot of people don't really realize where it came from, but basically Litecoin was invented when Charlie Lee just copied Bitcoin code. He did a, a copy paste and he changed one main thing. He changed the hashing algorithm to make it quote unquote faster. And we're going to see how important that is. So with Bitcoin, as we know, a new block is produced every 10 minutes. But with Litecoin, a new block is produced every two and a half minutes. So it's basically four times faster than Bitcoin. And the way it's able to do that is it uses a different hashing algorithm uh, than Bitcoin. Both Bitcoin and Litecoin are proof of work. You have these miners who are burning lots of electricity to secure the blockchain. Litecoin uses something called S-Crypt. It's spelled script, but it's pronounced S-Crypt, uh, whereas Bitcoin uses the SHA-256. Now, Litecoin just had its having um, a little bit before before Bitcoin. It had its, um, uh, I, I want to say it's its second halving. This was back in August 2019 when they have the, the rewards for the miners. And... Um, the reward, it's a little bit behind Bitcoin, so it went from 25 Litecoin minor reward to 12.5, whereas Bitcoin in the May 2020 halving went from 12.5 to 6.25. It makes sense because Bitcoin was invented about two years before Litecoin. The Litecoin, unlike Bitcoin, has performed fairly poorly since the August 5th halving. We can see at the August 5th halving, it was trading around, um, around uh, call it 80 call it 91, around $90 per coin. And it's now down to 48, 49 US dollars per Litecoin. Another problem, if we take a look and compare their hash rates, you know, I've talked about this in other videos, but Bitcoin has this nice upward sloping hash rate chart. Hash rate is just the computing power on the network that secures the blockchain. And not only is Bitcoin's hash rate much, much higher, it's measured in exahashes, but it's upward sloping, which means there's constantly being computing power added to the Bitcoin network. And you compare that to the Litecoin network, and it looks like we had a big run up going into the 2019 halving, and then it's since fallen off. If we scroll out, if we sort of pan out, we can see that it's much more sort of cyclical. Demand rises and falls, and we're now currently far below hash rate highs on Litecoin, whereas if we scroll out on Bitcoin, we can see it's just exploded upwards. And what this really shows is that there's much more demand for Bitcoin than hash, hash um, more demand for Bitcoin than Litecoin on the network. This makes sense when we, we compare the relative market caps 
of one point of 195 billion to three billion. But I'm going to show you the bigger, the biggest problem uh, with Litecoin, and get, this should hopefully give you an idea of why it's very difficult to fork coins to just copy Bitcoin and come up with your own uh, copy of it. The argument always is, well, Litecoin is faster because it produces more blocks uh, per hour. So Bitcoin produces uh, one block every 10 minutes. Litecoin is four times as fast. It produces one block every two and a half minutes. Now, in this argument, I'm going to use some um, an interesting idea that I got from Nick Carter's uh, article, article uh, Medium article called "The Settle." It's the settlement Insur assurance is stupid, and he also borrows this idea from Elaine Wu, who put it into a Bloomberg article, which I'll link to. And what this basically suggests is that if you are transacting on the Bitcoin network, how long do you need to wait until you know that your transaction is secure? And Elaine came up with this great idea that the theoretical uh, waiting time should be until you should wait until the ledger costly, costliness matches the transaction value or the miner's reward. And we're going to walk through that with um, with Bitcoin and Litecoin. And the basic idea here here is that if you look at the incentives for people to roll back the blockchain and undo the block, basically, if it's going to cost you a hundred thousand dollars to reverse to create sort of an alternate blockchain that has a different block. If it's going to cost you $100,000 to do that, if you're a rational actor, you want to make sure that you're going to make at least $100,000, probably a lot more than that, because it doesn't make sense to go to all that work to roll back the blockchain uh, just for a dollar or two of profit. But I'm going to show you the actual numbers here to give you an idea of why Bitcoin really has an advantage. So Litecoin is indeed faster because it uses a different hashing algorithm. One block every two and a half minutes. This, mean, this means it's producing 24 blocks every hour as opposed to Bitcoin producing only six blocks every hour. Now these are average numbers uh, for how long a, bit, a block takes to be produced. Current block subsidy, in other words, the miner's reward is 12 and a half Litecoin for every block. Litecoin's currently trading about $49 per Litecoin. And so if we just add up 24 blocks per hour times the block subsidy of 12 and a half Litecoin converted to US dollars, we can see that miners are being rewarded about $14,700 per hour. Now, obviously it's not always the same miner who takes home the block subsidy or miner reward, but this gives, just gives you a rough idea for the system as a whole. So let's say we're moving a million dollars. The qu one question might be, if you need to move a million dollars, are you gonna use Litecoin or Bitcoin? And the reason these large numbers like a million or a hundred million or a billion are important is if one of these is going to become going to begin to function like a currency, it needs to be handle it needs to be able to handle large amounts of money. Otherwise, institutional investors and really wealthy people won't be interested. Central banks won't be interested. Nation states won't be interested. And so, if if we're thinking about the incentives, if we are moving, if we are moving a million dollars, we want to make sure. We, we can consider that transaction settled when the same number of miners rewards, minor rewards have been burnt up. So if we just take a million dollars divided by 14,700, we get approximately 68 hours. At this point, the minor rewards for Lite, Litecoin will have been equal to a million dollars. And so it won't make sense for someone to sort of roll back history and try to, try to um, make sure that this $1 million doesn't settle, maybe in terms of a 51% attack or something like that, which I've talked about in other videos, 51% attacks. But basically it takes 68 hours to confirm or to have reasonable settlement assurances to be completely sure that your transaction has settled. You sent a million dollars, you received a million dollars, has it really settled? Has the wire hit your bank account, so to speak? Has it cleared? This is what we're talking about. So a million dollars, you have to wait 68 hours. And this is why it's sort of counterintuitive. Litecoin produces a block every two and a half minutes, which is great but it doesn't do you any good if you have to wait 68 hours for a million dollar transfer. You could, you could wire the money and it would be much, um, it would clear much faster. You'd have a much, a much faster settlement assurance. Now let's look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin produces a block every 10 minutes, six blocks every hour on average. Current subsidy, even after the May 2020 halving, 6.25 6 Bitcoin. Bitcoin's currently trading at about 10,000 
500. And so the minor rewards per hour, I should have said per hour here, are approximately $394,000 compared to $14,700. So it's really off by an order of magnitude. And what this means is if you're sending a million dollars, you only need to wait about two and a half hours to be sure that that million dollars has in fact settled, that you have the settlement assurance. And this is, this is simply, I'm just taking a million dollars divided by the minor rewards per hour. That gives you the number of hours. So paradoxically, even though Litecoin is faster, you get a much faster settlement assurance uh, with with Bitcoin. You have to wait m much less time, just a fraction of a day, whereas here you have to wait almost, uh, call it three days. Now, the other thing that large investors always consider too is liquidity. And so let's say that we're moving that $1 million that we were talking about. If we consider that as a percentage of 24-hour trading volume, it's about 0.045%. Whereas Bitcoin, a $1 million dollars, worth of Bitcoin as a percentage of 24 hour trading volume is another order of magnitude off. It's much smaller, 0 0.001. This is important if you don't want to move the market a lot, getting in and out. This is what's called slippage. And this is a, something that institutional investors and large investors always look at, which is uh, how big will my trade size be versus the whole market. If I'm looking to invest a billion dollars, I can't invest in a $2 billion company at least on the stock market, I would uh, drive up the stock price too much trying to get in. So let's just, let's use that billion dollar number. Let's up the magnitude here and say, you know, we're looking for a currency for institutional investors, for large investors. And so they'd like to be able to move a billion dollars worth of Litecoin. Well, if they try to do that right now, they will be 45% of the daily trading volume. This is just absurd. Most institutions would never want to be more than uh, 1%, maybe 2%, but probably just 1% of the daily trading volume. And so if you want to do a billion dollars worth of Litecoin, uh, or if you want to move a billion dollars or store a billion dollars in uh, sort of as a store value, you're not even going to look at Litecoin because it really, it only has that market cap of uh, of $3.2 uh, billion. I'm actually using the trading volume here, 2.2. 2. 2. 2. Um, but you can also do it as a percentage of the market cap. And if you do it with, uh, with Bitcoin, a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, you're only going to be 1% of the daily trading volume. And this is why Bitcoin has this huge advantage. Even though it produces blocks more slowly, there was just, uh, there's really no way for an altcoin like Litecoin to catch up. So when people, people always say in my YouTube comments, well, I could just... Uh, create my own alt altcoin. And people people really misunderstand or underestimate the network effects involved in this. So Charlie Lee, he did fork Bitcoin. He just copied and pasted the code, changed a couple things. He created his own coin. It's made him very wealthy, but has not made Litecoin holders very wealthy simply because you can fork a crypto, but you can't bring with it all the network effects, all the miners, the trading volume, the liquidity, the settlement assurances. And this is why it's not really uh, a contest between Bitcoin and Litecoin. Uh, we can see this especially in how they perform since their most recent halvings by their market cap and by their daily liquidity. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I come out with my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.